Okay, I think... To all you new students coming in, or that one that I'm talking to, either way, doesn't matter. First of all, don't be scared. It's big and it's different, and the classes are hard and it's gonna be okay. Chances are, you might be less nervous than I was. <laughs> you're gonna just be hyped. You're gonna be surrounded by friends. You're gonna be super excited. Believe that this is a place where God has chosen me to be at. This is holy ground. Step out of your comfort zone. Be responsible. But just put yourself out there and just get involved. Your experience really just gets extremely elevated when you throw yourself into so many different things. Also, go to every single event you can and try to meet people. You never know who you're going to meet. I've met some of my best friends on the first day of Welcome Weekend. Don't be afraid to say that you need help because we all need help. At the end, if you leave it up to Christ, everything will work out in His time. This is just the beginning of more and greater things that God has for your life. Welcome to APU! Welcome to APU! Welcome to APU! <laughs> Welcome to APU! Oh man, it's so good to be able to worship with you all in person. And thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Autumn, for leading us in worship tonight. Good evening. My name is Alex O, and I serve as the Director of Campus Life here at Azusa Pacific University. And on behalf of the Welcome Weekend planning team and the APU community, I'd like to extend a heartfelt welcome whether you're from the city of Azusa or from a country thousands of miles away, first year student or transfer student, maybe a parent, sibling, or friend, we're so glad that you are here. You made it to tonight, and there's a lot of feedback, but that's okay. Just wanna share with you that we so look forward to beginning this fall 2021 semester in person, amen? Yeah, that, you can clap for that. You know, we fully acknowledge uh, that these past 18 months have been tremendously challenging for all of us. But as we look ahead, I am hopeful for what God will do in and through us this year. So this day reminds me of the beginning of my own college journey. I remember the two hour drive down from my parents from Los Angeles, where I'm from, to San Diego in our 1996 Dodge Caravan for move-in day. No words were exchanged during the whole car ride down as my parents and I were in full anticipation of what was to come. We eventually arrived on campus, we moved my belongings in, and then it was time to say goodbye. I vividly remember standing in the parking lot next to the apartment complex that I had just moved into with my parents. And I recall my mom wearing the biggest sunglasses I had ever seen that day and realizing why when I noticed her rosy cheeks and their tears rolling down her face as we said goodbye to each other. And as I reflect on that day, I can't help but notice that day marked a significant transition for my life and for my parents as well. So it's our hope as an APU community to acknowledge and celebrate this significant transition for each of you that are in this room as a part of Welcome Weekend. Students, we hope that this weekend will equip you for the amazing academic year to come. Families and guests and friends, we look forward to sharing about the APU community and ways you can support, you can continue to support your student through their APU journey. With that, I would love to pray for us as we begin our time this evening. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this joyous occasion where we can gather together in your name to begin this academic year. We are grateful, maybe a bit emotional, that we are here today. We pray that you would remind us of your faithfulness, especially the way you have brought us through these past 18 months, 
and may we trust in your amazing and unchanging love. We pray these things in your almighty and matchless name. Amen. At this time, I would like to direct you to the screens for a welcome from our Aziza Mayor, Mayor Robert Gonzalez. Hello and good evening. I am Mayor Robert Gonzalez from the city of Azusa. I wanted to take this time to officially welcome you to our beautiful city. The city of Azusa and APU have always had a wonderful relationship. And I wanted to thank you for choosing one of the finest institutions in the country to further your education. I apologize that I cannot be there in person with you. Uh, I am away on a conference but I thought it was important for me to convey this message to students and parents that the city of Azusa supports you and your student and whatever you need, we will be there for you in partnership with APU. As you hear in my voice, um, I am a, a little congested. Um, I am a survivor of COVID last year. And I know the past 18 months has been very trying for all of us. So I appreciate us actually being together in person and, and being able to uh, get our education, get our, our social bearings back. It's a wonderful time. Uh, one of the favorite things that, that I get to do as a council member and now as mayor is to be there for you uh, on orientation day. So I'm excited for you. Uh, I welcome you again. Um, whatever you need, the city is here for you. And in a moment, uh, I will put my, my personal cell phone number and email address. So if you have any questions, concerns, uh, I have an open door policy, just as our former mayor did uh, in years past. I will continue that tradition. And I just wanted to be uh, here to thank you again and you know, explore Azusa, get what it has to offer you. Uh, for some of you, you will call this home for the next uh, four years, two years, whatever the case may be. Some of you will learn that you may never leave because you'll fall in love with this place. I've lived here 51 years and I'm still here. So I wanna thank you guys again, uh, wishing you a great and wonderful experience. And please feel free to call me or email me uh, with any concerns or questions or just to chat. Once again, I am Mayor Robert Gonzalez and welcome to Azusa. Thank you. Well, it's not that common to see a mayor who would be willing to give their number so that you could call. So we are so blessed to have a partner and a friend in this city. So, well, I want to extend our welcome to you as well. I am so excited that all of you are here. I've been praying for this moment because for about a year and a half, I've been stuck at home with my two kids and my COVID puppy and my husband, and we love each other, but it is so good to see other people's faces. Um, so welcome to APU. Uh, my name is Shino Simons, and yeah, um, and I get to serve as the, um, Vice President for Student Affairs, and I am so glad to be here with all of you. So some of you may be wondering, what is Student Affairs? Well, Student Affairs, basically our team, so Alex and our Health Center, and you've seen many of us already, um, we are here to do life with you, um, with our students. We get to journey with you, we want to see you grow holistically, so we want you to be well physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and of course, most of all, we want you to be well spiritually. So we will have many, many opportunities for you to engage with this community. And I want you to know, students, you were visitors before, you were trying to check us out and trying to figure out, okay, do I wanna to come to this school or what? But guess what? You are no longer a visitor. You are here and you are part of us. And so I want you to embrace the fact that you are APU, got it? So you're not a guest, you are APU. <laughs> and
And as part of our tradition here at APU, we love to celebrate and we love to put markers on these significant moments that we would have during your time here. I am sure you will have significant moments in your classrooms with your faculty members. Maybe those markers will be when you actually do a research with your faculty and get it published, right? I mean, that's awesome. Or it might be a moment where you decide, you know what? I want to cross that line of faith and accept Jesus into my heart, and I want to be baptized here on our campus. Or it might be a moment when you within your alpha group, you might go, oh my goodness, this is my best friend for life. And I've seen those moments. And, but tonight, after this, you will have an opportunity to have two of these moments. And the first one is, do we have the picture? The gate. So this gate, um, our upperclassmen know what this gate is all about. Um, you will have an opportunity to walk through this gate and it is a marker for you because you are starting your journey here. You are going to walk through this gate and step into this community and know that you are going to have an amazing experience and you will be transformed because of the work God is doing on our campus. So families, you will be a part of it as well. You will not necessarily go through the gate like the rest of the students, but you will kind of gather around the gate and you will create a space where our students could walk through. And later on, we'll give you a little more instructions about that. And don't forget, students, you will have a second opportunity to walk through that gate and that's gonna be on your graduation day. You will walk through that gate once more, but this time around, that time around, the next time, you will walk through and know that you are being sent out. So you will have those two moments bookend, beginning with the end in mind, okay? The other um, tradition that we have is called candela. Later on tonight, we will go out back into that field that you ate dinner at, and it will be cooler because the sun is gone. Praise the Lord. Yes. And, but we will have a time as community to reflect on what God is going to do and be excited for the fact that God is at work and that we get to be a part of his work and he will do his work in and through us. And so we will have that moment as well. So my hope and prayer for you is that during your time here, that you will continue to find those moments. You may not be lighting candles, you may not be walking through gates, but that you would have those significant moments in your lives where you know that God is moving and that your trajectory on your life has shifted because of the work that's being done on this campus. And so I look forward to hearing more about those moments with you as you journey through here at APU. So again, welcome to APU. Now I have the privilege of um, inviting Dr. Rakshan Fernando. He is our provost, and there is no better provost on this planet because he truly, truly cares about, not just about your academic work and who you are going to become as a scholar, but he cares about the holistic development of you and he wants you to be disciples and scholars. So, Dr. Fernando. Sheesh, whew. You know, don't you feel like that right now? And I know, by the way, after the gate, when you graduate, all the parents are thinking about this. You get a J-O-B, a job. Right, parents? Yeah. My name is Rukshan Fernando. I'm privileged to be the provost here at Azusa Pacific University. Uh, my name actually means beautiful tree. My kids say I'm more of an oddly shaped twig. Um, <laughs> But be that as it may, um, I get to have the privilege of being in charge of all the academics here at the institution. So the learning that you get here at APU is under my span of care. And I just want to remind all of the students that summer camp is ending 
and classes are beginning. Um, but let me just tell you a quick story before I kind of talk about the value of an APU education. So one of the privileges that I had growing up is that I grew up in two different countries. I grew up for part of my life in New York City, in Queens, and then for the rest of my life as a teenager, uh, middle school and elementary school, I was in a small island called Sri Lanka in the city of Colombo. And one of the, again, benefits of living in the city of Colombo is that I lived next to 60 families of slum dwellers. And so growing up in that environment really taught me the importance of my own privilege, uh, my, the value of an education, the fact that it was a privilege that I had a roof over my head, that I went to the uh, refrigerator, and that there was something called leftovers that some people didn't have, that I opened the tap and there was running water. And one of the amazing things is that I was able to develop relationships with my neighbors some of whom were extremely poor. And there was a young kid that I grew up with by the name of Chandrasekharan, and Chandrasekharan had polio. So he was kind of had a significant disability, and he wasn't taking care of himself just because of his life circumstances. And I still remember when I was about 12 years old, and my dad is a doctor, and he knocks on our gate. And we open the gate and we see Chandrasekharan's leg and there's a horrible, nasty wound. And so my dad carries him to his office and he asks me, okay, Rukshan, I'm gonna hold him down. You're gonna put hydrogen peroxide on your friend. So you can imagine as a 12 year old what that felt like watching the hydrogen peroxide land on this kid and this kid screaming in pain. And there was a moment for me that I realized that there was a gap in this world. There was a gap in this world and what, that world, what our world needed was a difference maker. And that's what we're about here at APU. There are gaps in this world where God is calling us, God is calling you as a transfer, as a freshman, as a first-time student, God is calling you to stand in that gap. God calls us to be, what I like to call it, repairers of that breach, the breach that exists in our society and world. Whether that breach is in the area of nursing, engineering, cinematic arts, social work, psychology, that breach is where God is calling you. And there are people, and they are called the faculty, in our classrooms that want you to live into that calling that God has for you. And more importantly, while it's great to be technical experts in your field, whether it be nursing or engineering or cinematic arts or the performing arts or social work or psychology, our faculty is again, not just concerned about you getting the books right, but getting your heart right. Because before platform comes character. And this world needs leaders with character. So for us, as APU faculty, as people committed to Christian higher education, it's valuable, it's incredible to see people become incredible scholars, experts in their field of study. But if they are not good, whole people who are following after Jesus, we have missed part of our mission. So I stand before you today inviting you to that process, inviting you as you sit in that acknowledged breach in the world that you're passionate about, that you need two things. You need faith and character, and you need learning. So welcome to APU. Congratulations on making it to this point, and we're looking forward to being part of your journey. Take care. And I, and I nearly didn't introduce my boss. So I, I, I need to do that.
because otherwise, you know. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've talked about is what does it mean to be a leader? I've had the privilege over the last one and a half years to work with an individual, a man of God, that is truly committed to growing our students, our faculty, our staff, and our leadership to push them to see beyond what they can do. And personally, I have been impacted by this mentorship. He's made me a better person. He's made me a better father. He's made me a better professional. I would say overall, he's made me a better man. So I want you to know that our president, President Paul Ferguson, is a man that is truly after God's heart. He's passionate about creating an environment for you where you can thrive and you can grow. So will you join me in welcoming our president, Paul Ferguson. Well, good evening. Thank you so much, Rickshawn. Very kind of you. He is the best provost on the planet. I mean, <laughs> nicely introduced. Uh, appreciate that, Chino. Well, it is so great to see all of you. This has been a remarkable year for us, a year and a half. You're going to hear that from everybody, how nice it is to be back together, uh, how nice it is just to be able to see half your faces. But the interesting thing is I, I hope that the message comes across today as you've had a a challenging day, a busy day, hopefully a thrilling day. You have felt the depth of the love and affection of the APU community. And I would share with you as we gather this week, the, the, the entire campus, the faculty and staff on Wednesday, different colleges and students, undergraduate and graduate. APU has come out of the pandemic, not with a whimper, but with a shout. If I was to go down a list and share with you the accomplishments of the faculty and students this past year, I think you would be perhaps stunned that God has blessed in the midst of incredible challenge. And that's what God does. Despite adapting, pivoting, moving into a very different space quickly because of the nature of the pandemic, we felt compelled and called, as Rukshan so articulately shared, to still provide that commitment, that deep commitment to Christ-centered academic excellence. And if there's any way just to summarize what happens at APU and what you're, as students, getting ready to engage in and enjoy, hopefully, parents, you will be so thrilled to hear the success and progress of your students in their programs. But what is it about Christ-centered academic excellence that makes this university so special? And when we talk about this university being special, it was wonderful to hear Mayor Gonzalez actually say he felt we were one of the best universities in the country. And that's not brag, that's just fact. But I want to share with you is that we're serious about high quality education for Christ's sake. Just this last year, Forbes magazine ranked Azusa Pacific University in the top 25 universities in the country. And it was based in their mind, highly prestigious journal, as you well know, it was based on a very significant alumni survey, alumni of all the universities. And as you would imagine, the best critics of any university is those students who graduate and find their professions. The survey was based on the alumni's perceptions of their preparation for their future career and their enjoyment of their future career, their fit in their future career as well as their experience during their undergraduate or graduate years. And actually, one of the questions on the survey was, would, if you had it all to do over again, would you go back to that same campus? And those high-ranked universities that APU was a part of, which actually included Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Dartmouth, incredible love for this university, incredible appreciation for the faculty, incredible appreciation for the preparation of their career. And it all goes back to that concept of Christ-centered academic excellence. And what does that mean? And the best way I can share that with you is to think about how Jesus answered the question, 
What's the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You come to APU, that's what you're challenged to do. Whether you're a nursing student, history student, social work student, enjoy that lecture, enjoy that study, write that paper with your heart, with your soul and your mind, open up your mind. We trust that if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, there is no limit to exploring knowledge. Own it, pursue it, conquer it. Because if you're committed to serving Christ and loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, knowledge is an open journey for you. And faculty of the highest caliber are here to walk with you to open that up. That is an exciting journey that you're gonna be vulnerable with, first of all. I'm gonna look scared. It's an intellectual risk-taking experience to put yourself out there. From freshman to senior is how you grow in maturity and understanding and problem solving. You want, we want you to be the best in skill set, doctor, lawyer, nurse. But the second part of that passage is love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't matter to have an ivory tower experience of knowledge. Being a scholar for a scholar's sake is only so good as it's applied to improve the world we live in. And if you come out of APU extraordinarily prepared in your discipline of choice and your career, and you're practicing, I'm loving my neighbor as myself, I care for them, then you will be known as one of the best nurses on the ward with a compassionate for people. You will be a wise leader and a compassionate leader. Wisdom and compassion mark the APU graduate. And that's what makes this place special. You find yourself immersed in Christ-centered academic excellence that not only changes you, transforms you, it's a contributor to transforming the world we want you to be. That's what is a difference maker. We don't want you just to get a degree. We do want you to be a part of solving the problems of our society with wisdom and compassion. And that's what I hope you find this first year. It's uh, gonna be challenging. It'll be incredibly busy. But I can tell you, as I know the faculty, I have such respect for our scholars. We have some of the finest scholars in the country in their disciplines. And as you know, and that, again, that's not brag, that's just fact, scholarship is not a self-identity. We trust peer review in all of our disciplines. We have some of the finest C.S. Lewis scholars in the world. We have some scientists who are well known for what they do. You get to study with them, but yet they're also gonna love you, care for you, and encourage you down that path of Christ-centered academic excellence. You know, we just uh, are in the midst of a new strategic plan at APU. We're a university, we gotta do planning, right? We gotta do a part of that. But renewal is the title of our strategic plan. How do we continue to develop scholars and leaders for society? And this is our vision, and we're glad you're gonna join with us, not only as students, but as parents. Our vision is to be that model or premier university, premier Christian university for our culture and times. We don't wanna be on the sidelines. We don't wanna be a high pie in the sky institution. We wanna help develop our students to solve our problems and to share Christ with the world. So thank you so much for coming to join our family. We want you to be challenged, we want you to be blessed, and we certainly want you to help change the world as difference makers. Continue to enjoy your weekend. We love each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Hello, welcome. I hope that I am the 100th person to say welcome to APU today. Uh, my name is Sydney. I have the opportunity and the privilege of working in the Office of Campus Life. And a major part of my role is getting to work with our Alpha leaders. So these are the students that you have seen wearing these black iHeart APU shirts. They have helped you move in. They've written on your car windows screamed at you, holding signs, probably so excited and aggressive, especially if it was very early in the morning. Um, and I can speak for the entire welcome team that we are so excited to finally get to see all of you as we have planned. Um, but I can guarantee you that that group waiting for you students is 10 times more excited and beyond. So at this time, I will ask all students, you will exit 
Felix Event Center, either door, and you will head up to Kretzky Plaza. During your check-in on your wristband, you should have had a number written on your wristband. That will be the number sign you look for, and that is your alpha leader and your alpha group. If you do not have the number on your wristband, do not worry. We have a table up there. Please come and find us, and we will happily welcome you and um, find your group with you. So students, please stand and head out. Parents, families, and guests, please stay. And as students leave, feel free to move in closer, however you would like. But thank you, students, and we will see you soon. Hello again, parents. How are you? Let me hear you. <laughs> well, thank you again so much for being here. Uh, we are so deeply appreciative for you being here and for your long day. How many are just a little bit tired? <laughs> hey, I get that. It's just been a little warm today. High of 99 in Azusa. Did anybody come from a cooler environment than today? Nice. My daughter was in 75 degrees back east, and I'm very jealous. Well, what our purpose is tonight, Grace and I, this is my wife, Grace. Would you mind giving her a nice welcome? The first lady of APU. Uh, we look forward to this opportunity. This is just very casual. Uh, your students are being cared for. And Grace and I want to just take an opportunity over the next 25 minutes just to be open and candid and loving to you. Because this is kind of a challenging day, moms, right? You're leaving children today. And sometimes that pulls on the heartstrings. Not that the dads aren't having the very same issue. Dads, are you having the same issue? <laughs> Well, Grace and I uh, have been blessed with three children. Uh, now, they're all probably a little bit older. Our oldest is in his late 30s. Our youngest is in his 30. But we've all been at that same position where we left our children for a really momentous moment in their careers. And what we'd like to do tonight is just share a couple of thoughts. Uh, Grace is going to share a little bit of her perspective of that moment when she left one of our children. We're gonna, we have three children, we're gonna go through each one, just as an example. And our whole purpose of this is not to just to talk about our children, who we love deeply, <laughs> but we really wanna just share with you, uh, hopefully, the, the very basic principle that God's gonna take care of each and every one of yours. We're gonna love them, like, kind of like they're ours. We can't love them like you, but we're gonna do our best. We know deeply what it means to have your children begin their college career. And you heard from Shino and Rukshan today, we take it very seriously, the nurturing and care of your sons and daughters. We will love them to the best of our ability. We will care for them. We will always work with you as partners for their better and good. I think that we are looking forward to you seeing their growth, for them sharing the excitement of their lives here at APU. But we're simply wanting to start our partnership with you tonight. This is something we're doing together. We take it very seriously, the responsibility that you've left with us to educate, encourage, nurture your sons and daughters. We will love them deeply. And we thank you for the privilege that allows God to work through us on your behalf. So tonight, uh, we want to share maybe a little bit of what you're feeling. Uh, we've been there three times for sure. And I hope that what our, our thoughts were just to share with you the principle that your good work in raising your sons and daughters is not in vain. Though sometimes you feel like, do they ever listen to me? One daughter is different than the other. My son and my daughters don't act the same. I do exactly the same thing. I couldn't believe it when my daughter who wanted to go to college wouldn't even listen to my recommendations. I said, look, I'm a college president. Don't I have some advice you want to give? He says, Dad, I love you, 
but my high school art teacher really knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Has anybody ever experienced that? So uh, our, our sharing with you tonight is in that spirit. So I want to start with our youngest daughter, Jenny. Uh, Jenny um, is right now a student affairs professional at the University of Maine. You'll notice a pattern in our children's <laughs> professional direction and it really does reflect how much we care about them and how much they grew up in the academic environment. As you can imagine, all of our children were intimately involved and graced my career. I'm just completing 40 years in higher education. So they grew up in this environment. So if you see a pattern, probably obvious. But Ginny was our last to leave. She was she stayed through college. Sometimes you'll, we'll talk about some of our children living with us, going to the same school that I was working at. But Ginny was the only child who wanted to play tennis like I did. She always was very close to her father. Uh, some suggested in our family that she was my favorite. And some people who suggested it were my son and my other daughter. <laughs> Has that happened in your family? Does anybody know there's a favorite child? The problem of that happened really at one Christmas, probably not too long ago, and I actually made the statement, as you guys know, Ginny was my favorite. I was just being facetious. And my oldest son said, and <laughs> very serious, said, Dad, we've known that for 15 years. <laughs> so I got the message. But Grace, why don't you share with a little bit about that moment when Ginny and you realized that you, she could be okay on her own. Hello, everyone. We are just so grateful that you have a moment here. You've had something to eat. I feel the air conditioner now, so I'm feeling a little bit blessed right now with that. I hope you're feeling cool. I know some of you may be thinking, I hope they don't talk too long. I still haven't made my students' bed yet, and I need to tell them this, and I need to tell them that, and I need to do this, and we still have to go to the store. I hope you'll just take a breath and just savor this moment. I think this is a precious time. It is one of our favorite events on the welcome weekend when we can just meet with you because first and foremost, we are parents. And I can promise you that our children growing up never said, um, President Ferguson, it was always dad. And when we see your kids on campus and we walk past them, we just offer up a prayer. We love on them because we know that it will not be perfect. Move-in day for you has probably not been perfect. There's probably been frustrations because that is life but they're gonna learn how to navigate this. And so we want you just to take a moment and just enjoy the rest of the time. So I'm gonna start telling you a story about Jenny. Now Jenny and her husband, they live in Maine and uh, they're expecting their first baby. So this is a pretty special time for us. But when the difference with our kids on this one is that we left Jenny. It wasn't that Jenny was going off to school. We were moving to another state. Now, she had just graduated from the University of Maine. Paul was president there. And we were going to another job. So I am busy packing for us to set up our new home. But I'm also having to help her pack because she and a girlfriend had rented a house and they were moving into that. So all of a sudden, I'm having this intense moment of we got a lot to do. So I'm going around, and she's kind of following me, and I said, okay, now, Jenny, as we walk past the washing machine, don't forget, put a little vinegar in there when you're washing, keep your clothes cleaner, keep the machine clean, we're good. We're in the kitchen. Okay, honey, when you're doing this recipe, don't forget this. And then don't forget that when you're polishing your wood desk that this works better, it won't leave prints and everything. And so this is how it's been going on for about a week. I am telling her everything that I think she needs to know. And all of a sudden, I'm, I remember very clearly, we were walking down the hallway together, and I'm, you know, I'm talking away, telling her what you know, she needs to do. And she says, Mom, Mom, stop. And I turn, and I'm going, what? And she goes, you need to stop. And I said, stop what? She goes, Mom, I know what to do. And I said, honey, I just, you know, I, I can't help it. I feel like all of a sudden time's up. And there's just so much more I want to say, so much more I want to show you. And she goes, Mom, I've been watching you for 23 years. I've been watching you. I know what to do. I got this. And that was my moment. 
I hope you've had it or will have it this weekend when all of a sudden I just breathed. And I realized, I looked at her and I thought, she's a beautiful woman and she has it. And I, told her, I hugged her and I said, honey, I love you so much. I know you've got that. So then I turned and walked away and said, oh, but by the way, before you go, <laughs> you do the same, you know that. <laughs> That was really an interesting eye-opening thing to observe as well. Uh, and Jenny is very independent, uh, but just again, as you would feel about yours, wonderful person and, and expecting her first child, we're very blessed. So our middle daughter is Kate, Catherine to her friends. Uh, we named her Catherine, because I thought that was a beautiful name, but I wanted it, <laughs> I just said that, I wanted it. I love the nickname Kate. And so I said, oh, this is great. We're going to name her Catherine, and then we'll just call her Kate. You know, she can have that formal name if she needs it for her profession, but she'll be known by Kate. All through school, she went by Catherine, and all of her friends call her Catherine, and her husband calls her Catherine, because that's how she wants it. We are the only ones who call her Kate. <laughs> but I say that Kate is a physician in New York City, our only granddaughter is hers and her husband Bobby. They are a wonderful couple in New York City that have navigated tremendous challenges during the pandemic. I personally was very humbled in the early stages of the pandemic. As you may remember, New York City was the epicenter. My daughter was working in a clinic downtown and she called me and said, Dad, I just want to let you know the clinic is pretty busy, but they're asking for a number of us to go to a, another clinic just to help out because the COVID patients are just really overflowing. And she said, what do you think? And I said, oh, so what are you thinking as a dad? You're thinking, is she asking me to say no or to say yes? Protect yourself or be a servant? And so I just was really kind of giving her a hesitation. You know, look, little Abby is, I gave her every excuse that I could say that she shouldn't go and protect herself. And she says, you know, dad, I really thought about that but it's really my duty. I really feel it's my obligation as a doctor to be there for these people and I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Have you ever had that moment where your children humble you like you've never been humbled before? And I got off the phone and I told Grace and I, was, I had tears in my eyes. I mean, wow, my daughter just schooled me on humble service in a unique environment that needed her. That's what happens when your children kind of catch you up short and you're just so grateful that they're growing into these wonderful people. But Kate was always the smartest one in the family, and I mean that very sincerely. Very intelligent, very driven, um, always wanted, she was that one, you know, when school started, that let's go get school supplies. I want all my school supplies to be in order, all my notebooks. She was orderly and just focused. Kate was the individual who really enjoyed class, just loved it, wanted to go here, wanted to go, wanted to be a doctor. And so she went to Vanderbilt University as an undergraduate and then to New York University as a, for medical school. But it was at Vanderbilt that she, Grace and her went to move in at Vanderbilt University that, that first week. All right, so child number two. Now, child number one and our baby, they're the ones that stayed at home the longest. But Kate, she wanted to go all four years, live on campus, and not go to a university that her dad was at, okay? So as it turned out, once again, we're leaving. Our son is going to be a senior at UNLV. We're leaving to move to Illinois. So we said goodbye to our son. Now we're moving, and as soon as we get to Illinois, I'm taking her to Tennessee, you know, to go to school. And I'm not real happy. I know some of you, you got your 18-year-old, 17, 18, 19-year-old. I think, oh, you know, but, you know, I, I tried to be real strategic about this. I didn't want to cry. And it's not that crying's bad. You know, I, I can pretty much cry just about anything. But I didn't want to cry. I didn't want it to be about me. I didn't want her to have to comfort me. And I, above all else, I wanted her to know that I knew she could do this. So, you know, during the day when she was at school, I'd put on the saddest music, and I'd walk around the house, and I'd go, this is the last time I'm going to 
see her here. Last time I'm going to fold this. Last time, you know, and I would just cry my eyes out, hoping that I would just get it out of my system, you know, that I would be thinking of other things. So, you know, we got the information about moving in, and I don't know what it is about moving day being the hottest. For our son, it was 117 degrees. For our daughter in Tennessee, it was 90 degrees with 90% humidity. You couldn't hang anything on the walls because they were soaking wet with all the humidity. So I knew that she, her resident hall, they have since torn this down, but at that moment, um, she was going to be living in a, 40, a, a, a bomb shelter that was built in the 1940s. She was going to have 80 square feet of room. So, you know, we, I don't know, did you guys use those space bags? <laughs> you know, that you hook a vacuum cleaner up to and, you know, it flattens everything out. I figured if we could get it in the car, we were probably good to go. So we go down. Um, Friday morning, we had to be in line at 6 o'clock in the morning, and we drove in a caravan to the parking lot of our uh, resident hall. The student, we unload the stuff. The students take it all up. No elevator, by the way, in a bomb shelter. So, you know, we're trugging up four flights of stairs. It's so hot. And we get through the day. We um, stayed in a hotel that night. Next morning, we're, we're at Target. Uh, you know, we just, Target looked like a bunch of ants were descending on it. You know, you couldn't even find a, a shopping cart. Parents were on the phone with their kids saying, hey, did, did you get a cart yet? And well, I'm over here. And, and it was just bananas. So we're going through all this, and I'm actually doing pretty good. But Vanderbilt had a rule. Come 10 o'clock Sunday morning, parents, you're gone. So I knew, dun, 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 the time was ticking. But so far, so good. I was doing good. Kate was getting acclimated, and I had made her bed. That has become a joke that no one can make the bed right unless I make it. So we got everything situated, and <clears throat> it came Sunday morning. We'd have breakfast together, time to go. So we're, you know, getting ready. She says, Mom, um, you know what? You got me a credit card, but I haven't tried it yet. How about we go to the bookstore and I make sure it works? I said, okay, that's a good idea. So we go to the bookstore, long line. So I'm just looking around. I see her slowly progressing up to the um, cashier. And then I watch her. I'm just kind of standing back and watching her. And she gets up there. She puts her purchases down. And he rings it up. She is checking to make sure that everything is accountable. And of course, at that time, we don't have a, you know, tap your card. It was, vroom, vroom. you know, you got and then you got to sign for it. So I'm watching this, and I see her take the pen, and she's looking down, being very thoughtful, and signs her name and takes her purchases. No matter, I don't know what it was, but watching her sign her name, I burst into tears. And at that moment, I, again, I looked at this young woman. She's an adult. Look how she's handling herself. She's gone in. She's done her purchases. She's checked her receipt. She is good to go. And I was just overwhelmed with pride at that moment at this child that is ready to go. And I'm going to miss her so much. So quickly, I turned. I walked out the door. And she's calling after me, Mom, Mom, where are you going? I'm trying to you know, shake it off. Come on, you can do this. And I am literally sobbing. She comes up to me. She taps me on the shoulder. And I turn around. She sees me crying. And she goes, Mom, what's wrong? And she, all I could say was, you signed your name. <laughs> so then, now I just want you to fast forward four years. See, when she lived at Vanderbilt, they required that you live on campus all four years. In the fall, we move her in. In the spring, we move her out. And then she never did come live back home again. So that really was our goodbye weekend, just to let you know. She got a job, and she stayed in Nashville and worked. So in the summer, she subletted an apartment. So we would do this move in, move out, move in, move out. You know, for four years, we were doing this you know, finally, by the time we got to move her out after graduation, and she had all her stuff, all I wanted to do was throw it in the dumpster. I never want to see that stuff again. But we got the car loaded. We got the, uh, you know, the, her room was all clean, ready to go. The RA came. Paul was waiting in the car. And um, I'm standing there with her, just outside the door. And the RA comes in with her clipboard. Check, 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 check. Make sure she didn't punch a hole in the wall, you know, or do anything, break the windows. So I'm, I'm looking at Kate again. Uh, she's now graduated. She's going on to medical, been accepted. You know, it's all good news. She's going to be home for a month. Good news. Uh, she's also engaged to her high school sweetheart. They're getting married, the, uh, you know, Mr. Wonderful, and, uh, and he is Mr. Wonderful. 
So, you know, it was all good news. So I'm watching her again, and, you know, she's going through the clipboard, and then she grabs a pen from the RA, signs her name. If I didn't burst into tears again. And so I quickly, I, I go outside, and I'm going to the elevator. You know, <laughs> come on, I don't want to see her cry. So she comes over, and my shoulders are shaking, you know, and she goes, Mom, what's wrong? And again, all I could say was, you signed your name. So that has become kind of a joke in our family, but the bottom line is, and I, and I want you to take this moment with your kids right now, because I know right now you're anxious to get back and help them finish up. You know, just step back and watch them. I think you're going to be amazed as they're interacting with the people they've met. They need to get busy about what they're doing. I think you're going to look at them with different eyes. I think you're going to see them that you have raised this amazing adult, and like my youngest daughter, you're gonna, she's gonna, your child's going to say, I can do this. And you know what? They can. I mean, I didn't want my kids to see me cry. Uh, actually, my daughter kind of complained about that afterwards. because Mom, I was worried about you when you weren't crying all weekend. But I basically wanted them to know that I believed them. So I'm going to ask you tonight, tomorrow, when you're watching your student, don't solve it for them. Just stand back. I think you are just going to be blown away that they've been listening to you. And by the way, Grace cried every kindergarten first day, oh. right? You know, our, our granddaughter's going to preschool. I'm already <laughs> upset about it. She's going to, in the, in the so September. So just how many moms cried on the first day of kindergarten? Thank you. I see those hands. Dads, how many dads? Thank you for your honesty and candor. And the rest of you, really... Nothing. So it comes to our last, but not least, our oldest son, David, uh, who is a professor of kinesi uh, exercise physiology at Michigan State. Probably has followed the closest to my path, though, again, far, far surpassing his father in uh, scholarly efforts uh, at his young age. I'm so proud of him and has grown into such a fine young scientist and individual. So David was with us at UNLV uh, for three years, and then we moved on to another job, as Grace was saying. And I, I never saw Dave on campus. David worked on campus. He went to his undergraduate work. And when, he grad when, when it, we were leaving, and I was kind of sharing with him after we had gone, I said, you know, Dave, something was bothering me. All the years that we were on the same campus together, he says, what was that, Dad? I mean, <laughs> very honest. And I said, you know, we never got together. We never had lunch. I mean, you never came to the office. What's that about? So I'm thinking he didn't want to be seen with his father. And would you think that? I mean, am I, are you embarrassed to be with your dad? Am I going to embarrass you? I think I'm a pretty cool guy. I mean, look at these shoes. I mean, <laughs> David would advise me on these shoes, by the way, tonight. <laughs> but we were having this very honest conversation. Said, Dave, I mean, and he looked at me and he goes, you know, Dad, I'm sorry you felt that way. I mean, that was never the intent. I honestly just didn't want anybody to think I was getting a free pass because you were a vice president. I didn't want to take advantage of your position or I didn't want to embarrass you by people thinking I was getting away with stuff. I just wanted to do my best and make you proud. Oh, wow. Again, humbled by my son's <laughs> incredible kindness in that. And I didn't even think about that. He says, well, thanks, Dave. Uh, great, let's go to lunch. He goes, no, Dad, I'm busy. I got to go to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I, he, he does love me. I know that's true. So, but David and his mom were extraordinarily close. They, uh, being the firstborn, uh, they have a very special relationship. And many times when I was having to work, or Grace would be there to help move in and such. And, this last special uh, experience with David, I, we're going to be our last example, but it really does, again, underscore that wonderful commitment to your child that you will be blessed at some moment that it will return on you, your investment in their lives. So David is 38, married, uh, assistant professor at Michigan State University, and we're super proud of him. And when we were leaving, we moved him into an apartment, 117 degrees, <coughs> and you know, I, I've been thinking about this. I mean, it took about, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks as we were moving him in. But the funny thing is, he'd come home from work and come to our place. 
you know, and he'd have dinner and sit in the couch, and finally we'd be going to bed, and that's when he'd finally leave to go to his apartment. So it, getting into the apartment was a little s slower transition, I should say. But um, it was the last night. We picked up um, Burger King, going to eat in his apartment to say goodbye, and I had written him a letter. And in this letter, I was just telling him that I was proud of him, that I would just miss him terribly, uh, but I knew that he would do well. And uh, I included the words to a song by the Wilkinsons, uh, 26 Cents. And it starts with, um, she sat all alone on a bus out of Beaumont, Beaumont, the courage of just 18 years. She sat with a note in her hand, a quarter and a penny, and her mama's goodbye in her ears. And the song goes on how this girl at 18 was leaving and she was going to start on her own, but her mom had given her this penny for her thoughts and a quarter for the call. And it says, you can call me anytime. I'll be there with you because I'll always love you. So I wrote that to them and I said, you know, you can call anytime. In fact, I hope you do. And uh, I'll always be there with you. And so that was the note. Well, time has gone by. He's moved back and forth. But um, the last move that I helped him uh, with, he was moving from, he lived in a loft in, uh, in uh, Michigan and he was getting married. And he had gotten an apartment. His now wife is from the UK. So she was over there finishing up her postdoctoral work. And uh, he got an apartment. And so I came to help him move. So I'm, you know, emptying out drawers and putting things in. And so when I opened his nightstand to empty it, and I've got, a, you know, almost two decades have gone by now. When I've opened his nightstand, there on top is the letter that I had written to him. And I say that because. I would have thought that those things would have gotten, after a couple weeks at least, thrown in the trash and forgotten. But here, how many times, I was calculating how many times he had moved, and it had been quite a few. You know, he had been in Texas and North Carolina and now in Michigan, and here was this letter on top that I had written him. You are going to get a chance tonight. We're going to give you cards to write to your student. and. I think, above all, your student needs to know that you know they can do this, that you love them and support them, that you believe in them. And I promise you that they will not forget those words. Our son didn't forget them. And I am just amazed as I look back, our youngest who said, Mom, I've been watching you. I've got this, right? Our middle daughter, as I watched her and saw that she had grown into an adulthood and it was just overwhelming. To our son, who kept a letter that I wrote him so many years ago. In fact, he wrote me a text this week and he said, Mom, I bought myself a car. I just want you to know you be proud of me. I negotiated the deal like you taught me. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs> uh, so I encourage you with that as you're leaving, step back, watch your child. Be proud of them. As you write this note, remember, 20 years from now, it may be in their drawer, and they will look at it and remember the loved one, the parent, the grandparent, the friend, the caregiver, whoever you are, that you were here on this day, that you believe they could do it, and they will. Thank you, Grace. Sure, absolutely. Well, we just, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we got back from having spent a, a vacation visiting each of our children, uh, a week each place. And I think that we came home and we were sitting at the kitchen table just reflecting, having, you know, decades after they've graduated from undergraduate, seeing the kind of people they've grown up to be, the quality of their lives, the commitment of their lives. and knowing that this moment is such a transformational moment, an investment that you have. And I hope that our comments tonight uh, simply reflect our understanding and encouragement that this is a great moment together. It's not a last, it's not a end of the road, something ending, it's something beginning. It's something thrilling on their journey of personal development. And knowing that as they enlarge their circle of friends and enlarge their circle of mentors, that doesn't displace you. 
We were never displaced. We just figured out a different way to be with them, to encourage them, to always be their parents. Because at the end of the day, you're always their parents. And you're always that strong, bold voice that they really look to see, even as I talk to each and every one of my children on this last trip, who still seeks advice, who still seeks affirmation, not because they can't live without it, but because they enjoy it, because you have that wonderful bond that you've built. This is a moment in that journey. We're going to continue to pray for you and your student, and uh, we'll do our best to be your partners in that. So as Grace was saying, uh, our SGA leadership is going to start passing out to you cards and pencils for you to write a note to your student uh, to encourage them. Our SGA and student affairs staff will distribute that to them sometime later this year. So Alex, I think we've got everybody distributing with SGA, I'm hoping. I can't see movement. Is SGA moving? Do we see anybody moving? <laughs> okay, I see them moving. Let's give our SGA leadership a round of applause for, thank you. But for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'm just going to encourage you to think about what do you really want to make sure your son or daughter hears and knows, and that they will maybe have that in the drawer to be encouraged when maybe they need it the most and they maybe just don't feel like talking, but they feel like hearing your voice through your words. The other aspect I'd encourage you to do if you feel led tonight and Maybe you just want to write a general note of encouragement uh, to, to a student you don't know. Just make it open-ended. Uh, just give them an encouragement. Say you don't know them, but you're a parent of another student, and you hope they're having a good time. Be praying for them. So put your student's name on your card so everybody we can sure they get it this year. Uh, don't worry about the other card. Uh, our staff will take care of that. But use this time. We just encourage you to kind of pour your heart to your student to share with them that moment without the, the acute business of moving in. Love them on the note, and I know that they'll appreciate it. So on behalf of Grace and I, we are so grateful for you to be here tonight. We hope that this day is a meaningful one for you that really is a punctuation on a new and wonderful life with your student. Thank you all. May God bless each and every one of you.